Foundations 10, let's have a look at um, some more factoring. Specifically, we're going to look now at factoring special polynomials. We've been uh, factoring for a bit now. Honest, that's a special. Let's try that again. Factoring special polynomials. What does that mean? Well, let's start with remembering what factoring means. We're going to be looking at something with lots of uh, variables and numbers and whatnot involved in here called a polynomial. When we factor, we are going to be creating smaller expressions that are being multiplied together, very important, to create an expression that is still equal to this original polynomial. That's what factoring is. You have to understand what you're trying to accomplish. You're never going to be able to get there. So we're going to try and rewrite expressions so that there are things being multiplied together but still equal to the original. So what if I give you the instruction, factor 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. We know this has three terms, making it something we called a trinomial. And we have some uh, skills, some strategies for factoring a trinomial. One of them involves basically trial and error. We know because we're factoring a trinomial, we're probably aiming for two binomials, meaning two smaller expressions, each with two terms. We know that the first things in the binomials have to multiply to make a 9x squared. Odds are it's either 9x and an x, or 3x and a 3x. And we can gamble and try something. I'm going to go ahead and guess, hey, you know what? I'm going to speculate that it's 3x and x. The last two things over here have to multiply to give me a 1. The only two numbers multiply to give 1 are 1 and 1. And then we just have to look at the signs. We need the outside and the inside to go together to make negative 6x. We know this times this has to be a positive 1. Um, playing around with all of that, you should be able to see that these both have to be negatives. Now that said, there's another way to factor this that you also know. Bah. Um, called method of decomposition. Method of decomposition takes the original trinomial, takes this middle term, and splits it into two pieces. The two pieces, we know, if I go 9 times 1, they have to multiply to make that 9, and have to add to make that negative 6 in the middle. In other words, I'm going to split that 6x like so. And that plus does not look like a plus. Let's fix that. Then, using grouping, first two terms and last two terms, what do 9x squared and 3x have in common? I can take a 3 and an x out of the both. And it's going to leave me with a 3x minus 1. For the second one, I need to also take out 3x minus 1 somehow. How am I going to do that? All that's coming out is another minus 1. There's the common factor, 3x minus 1. Wow. And what's left? Another 3x minus 1. Notice something here. Um, we factored this two different ways, but look at our answer both times, and obviously we should get the same thing. If we have something times itself in math, we don't have to write it like that. We can go ahead and say, you know what? That thing is squared. And please bear with the way my pen is writing today. That's brutal. Like so. Let's go to a new page. The question we've been working with is 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. I'm going to show you something interesting about it because this is a, a special kind of uh, polynomial, actually. And it is something called a perfect square trinomial.
Why is it a perfect square trinomial? Because when we factored it, if you remember, our answer is something squared each time. If we know that, if we can see that, we can save ourselves time. Now, let's look at, uh, I, I'm going to show you what you're going to look for, really. When I look at this first thing and this last thing, this is a perfect square, so is this. Let's lose that equal sign for a second. What's the square root of 9x squared? It's 3x. What's the square root of 1? 1. If I go 3x times 1, in other words, take the product, and double it. 3x times 1 is 3x, doubled is 6x. Notice this 6x is that middle term. Anytime you notice that, if you see that the square root of the first times the square root of the last doubled gives you the middle, then we can factor it using a little trick. Because we recognize that it's a perfect square trinomial, we can say square root of the first thing, square root of the last thing. Now here's one little catch, that sign is going to be right there, squared. And that's it factored. Boom, done. So let's say I gave you one like, let's factor 25m squared, 40m plus 16. When you look at this trinomial, things that should jump out at you, 25 and 16 are perfect squares. The square root of 25m squared is 5m. The square root of 16 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20, doubled is 40. This is a perfect square trinomial. Take this sign, put it in the middle. Say, hey, I know that these things are squared. These two expressions are equal. We have factored it. How? By recognizing that it's a perfect square trinomial and then using a little bit of a shortcut. Are there other shortcuts for factoring? Sure are. Let's see if you can see this one. First of all, let's expand something. Let's go m plus 2 times m minus 2. First, outer, inner, last. Those inside ones are something we call opposites, exactly the same term but with a different sign in front. When you add them together, you get zero, they disappear, and you're left with m squared minus 4. Now what if the question said factor m squared minus 4? How can we use what just happened here to find a pattern to factor this? This is something, it also has a special name. This is something called a difference of squares. Difference meaning subtract. Difference in math has meaning. Squares, well you know what squares are in math, they're things that are squared. I've got m squared and a 4. Those are both squared. They are being subtracted. This is a difference of two squares. To factor it, we go ahead and notice each of the factors had an m. Well, this had an m squared. m squared, I know the first thing in each factor is going to be an m. The last thing in each factor was a 2. Where did that come from? Realize 4 is a perfect square. It is 2 squared. The last thing in each factor is going to be a 2. Now notice the signs in what we expanded. One was a plus, one was a minus. That was really important because that's what made these two middle terms that then cancelled one another out. When you're factoring a difference of squares, you've got uh, something squared minus something squared. One binomial factor will have a plus, the other will have a minus. Let's look at one more uh, like that. Let's factor minus 2m cubed plus 
M. Don't forget everything you already know. Step one when we're factoring. Always, always, always look for a greatest common factor. If you forget to look for the greatest common factor, you're always going to be making your life far more miserable. I see a two in both of them. I hate a negative at the front of an expression. I'm going to factor out negative two. Do you have to? No. However, I like the first term positive when I go to factor if there's more factoring to do. Oops, I missed something. I also have an m in both of them. The smallest exponent is this m to the 1, so the most I can take out is a single m. That leaves, what would I multiply by negative 2m to get negative 2m cubed? m squared. What would I multiply by negative 2m to get positive 32m? If I divide, I can see that that would be a negative 16. Now here's where the difference of squares comes in. Difference. Square, square. So, don't lose that common factor. It's got to sit in front of everything. But now we're factoring this piece. A difference of squares results in two binomials, so I might as well draw my brackets. The square root of m squared is m. The square root of 16 is 4. Because it's a difference of squares, I know I need opposite signs, so if I expand, the inside terms cancel one another out. And that's all there is to it. That's how you factor um, a difference of squares. So there's perfect square trinomials and difference of squares factoring, two of the special polynomials that you'll run into as you continue through your math. Head back to your notes and see if you can do some questions.